Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Richmond vs Western Bulldogs game, just trying to keep them short and sharp. Um, I don't, given there was two games on at once and I was doing some stuff, um, I was out for like the second to like the third quarter for this game, or the third quarter to the fourth, I was out for a, basically a quarter and a bit of this game, so I didn't necessarily get to watch um, too much, but I sort of got the gist of what was going on. The um, Bulldogs just smoked them. As simple as that. The Bulldogs were on tonight, uh, were on last night, and they just absolutely smoked the pretty much hopeless Richmond side. And it sucks because, yeah, Richmond, it just shows the difference between um, when these, they traded for um, uh, Taranto and Hopper, and they basically derailed their whole going youth by chasing almost uh, another flag, I guess. And, yeah, their youth is just not um, coming through at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I would be, if I was a Richmond, I'd be looking to try and um, to try and trade and get some more um, high-ranking high ranking picks. I'd be taking four or five um, youth guys trying to offload some of their um, veterans, honestly, and just basically move on and take a year or two out of it but also have that sort of still have that 24 to 28 class still there but that 28 plus class try and almost move them on but anyway i'm not a list manager at richmond but anyway let's before we get into this video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when i upload and let's get into the video so in what was a really just awful game to be honest with you daniel really 102 we sort of saw this um he's very very similar to nick blakey in terms of um streakiness um, I mean, Nick Blakey probably gets a little bit more just because I think he's on kickouts and they've got uh, Gene Short on kickouts for Richmond, and that's probably the difference there. But 19, 26, 38, 19, he's not really going to be relevant, to be honest with you. He's going to have these um, these games where he goes 100, 120, but he's not going to have relevant um, stats across the whole season when you sort of return back to the, to the averages or um, the norm. Bolton, 89, he had a... Mm, huge second half because I remember telling someone in the um that asked a question who to go for and I said Bolton and he was having a horrific first game uh, last week and then this week as well um I remember seeing him on about tw I, it probably would have picked him picked up the game again right around the point where he was on what's that 23 yeah probably 23 if not even um 28 here and then he's just gone on a run here and somehow picked up to 89 points. So that just shows Shea Bolton's sort of class and that he can put on scores very, very quickly. It does does help that he kicked goal very, very late here to get... Um, uh, you can see here 12 points here from the uh, from a plus six and a goal here. So yeah, that probably did help him. But an 89 actually isn't the worst. Uh, and then Curvis A2, Sonsi, Mantle. But I can basically fly through this Richmond lineup because... They have no relevance. No one's a good. No one's really a, um, a sort of accumulator in their list. Just looking at it, I think they just need to. It, and I think there will become a point in the season here where Richmond do change it up or something like that, and just try and get to the end of the season. And they'll do that just by trying to chip it around, like we saw Hawthorne last year. And I think that's when Jaden Short comes into it. But at the moment, they're just trying to trying to implement a style that just isn't working with their list, and Jaden Short isn't really getting on. Um, I'm happy that I kept Campbell in the end because he's making more cash, but yeah, 68 for him, did lose out 10 points on taking Garcia's score, but you're always going to take a 58 when you have a small forward, um, so yeah, Campbell's 68, I was sort of surprised about, he didn't even kick a goal for that 68, so yeah, that just shows how weird his scoring can be, um, after I think a 35 last week, Prestia, Ralph Smith, Dow, Martin, Miller, Brown, Pickett, Bolter, Broad, Young, Leofow I think is a bright spark for them, um, so I wonder what they're going to do because Dan Kovac is getting on and you do have Lafau who can play as a sort of, um, as a Ruckman, well, as a forward Ruck. So whether you think that, um, Samson Ryan can actually be a Ruckman is another question. Um, Banks injured, Rioli injured. I think Rioli had a bad ankle injury. Banks, um, bad concussion, I believe, but I was out, I think, during the Banks concussion. Um, I did come back and see Rioli get injured, I believe. So that was roughly around the time that I came back or something. Oh, no, sorry. I turned it back on to the... Um, I was watching the other game and then turned it back on to see Rowley get injured, which sucks because he's he's a pretty fun player to watch when he gets up and going. And then Graham, I believe, as well got injured. I didn't see the Graham injury. So that probably lines up with, yeah, with me missing the second half 
uh, or something, or just missing the, the third quarter if he got injured in the third. Chalor, absolutely huge, 40-odd touches, and he's the one that's... Um, it sucks because these players, when you say don't go to these players, because when they pop, people will say, oh, you should have known that. But it's just managing risk at this point, and um, Trelaw was way too risky to go for. And like I was saying with... Um, with Meek and 20%, I think there's a 20% hit rate with um with uh, pods and true laws are the one that's going to beat it out and people are going to be like, oh, you should have seen that one coming. But yeah, 154 from him. Um, One of my mates mentioned uh, Richards, is he a go? I don't think so. He's popped 70s outside of this 141, so I don't think that's a go. Neither is Harms, just because Harms is either sub or different position and he did kick four to the, get to the 134. So if you take out those four goals plus the um, sort of kicks that goal for those, um, that sort of gets him down towards that 98. Um, but as a forward, he could be interesting if he piles it on two weeks running, as he is only like seven, six, five eighty-seven. So you can probably still pick him up at 700k if he pops for the next couple of weeks. Bondo Pelly 126, Norton English 109, um, Bailey Dale 104. So Bailey Dale again still in that halfback role, doing really, really well. Um, will be interesting if uh, Libba returns, whether Ed Richards goes down back. But I think Libba's going to be out for three or four more weeks and potentially even retire. And if he does retire, then Bailey Dale's an interesting one to look at. And I think also Ed Richards is an interesting one to look at if Bailey Dale does retire. Um, Williams, McRae, 88, and just shows McRae, even though he didn't have the best of games, he still puts out an 88, like it doesn't even matter. Uh, Sam Darcy kicked four to get to an 85, so happy about that. In Supercoach terms, he went like a 112 or something like that, just because he, it was like two or three contested mark goals. Garcia, 85, he did really, really well for those who picked him up. Um, sort of sucks that I couldn't pick him up in either format, but he's done pretty well. O'Donnell, Gallagher had 20-odd touches, so I thought he did really well as well. Johannesson, Frazier is an interesting one to look at, I believe, 102K or something like that, so maybe, or in um, Supercoach. Is he? Um, I'll have to check that. But uh, or he's one twenty k because he got drafted, I think, recently. I would need to check the um the, sc- uh, the pricing of that. But he's one that you could potentially look at in a couple of weeks' time on the bubble and potentially look at this week if he does stay. But I think he was playing a half back line, so will be an interesting one. Um, then Bramble, Treyer, Jones, Cleary, West, Hugo Hagen had a shocker. Keith and Vandermeer, and you just look at and I, I think this is going to be the problem for the. Um, for uh, Western Bulldogs in general. Look at this bottom sort of eight here. Bramble, Drea, Jones. Jones is a good player. Cleary coming off the sub. Can't really, off the bench, can't really uh, blame him. West, Hugo Hugo Hayden's fine. Keith and Vandermeer. You sort of have six guys there that aren't really, I don't think, um, good enough to play AFL. And so, yeah, it's just an interesting one there. And I think that's the reason why um, the Bulldogs aren't necessarily the greatest is they get exposed for their bottom six every week. But that is pretty much the video there. Another eight-minute video, so we're smashing through these. And I guess I will see you guys tomorrow for the last three recaps of the round. But I'll see you then. Bye, guys.